Welcome to BE101X, Behavioral Economics in Action. I want to emphasize the importance of the title of this course, in particular the last two words, in action. But before I do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Dilip Soman, and I'm going to be the instructor for BE101X this year on edX. We've all been exposed to the notion of behavioral economics. Perhaps most of you have read books like these. Uh, Dan Ariely's book on predictably irrational, Dick Taylor's book on nudging, Chip Heath's book on being decisive, and Danny Kahneman's work on thinking fast and thinking slow. A lot of the work has gone on to explain how people make decisions, and in particular, focusing on the kinds of errors that they make in their decision making. We've all ex been exposed to the fact that human beings are not rational, we make systematic mistakes, that we act in, uh, in ways which are contrary to our own self-interests. But in this course, we want us to go one step further. We want us to ask the important question, so what? Now, before I go on and talk about the course itself, let me tell you a little bit about the work that's happening here at the Rotman School that supports the course and, in fact, the cluster of activities surrounding the course. I'm part of a research cluster called Behavioral Economics in Action, and that's where the course gets its name from. And what the research cluster does is it takes the principles of behavioral economics, of decision making, and applies them to real world situations in the world of policy, in the world of social welfare, and in the world of business. Our work focuses on taking learnings from the behavioral lab, from theory, and applying them to help people make better decisions one step at a time. And you'll hear a lot about that research and that approach in the rest of this course. BE101X is going to be divided into three separate chunks. In the first module, we'll cover the basic principles of behavioral economics. We look at why people are irrational, what are some of the principles that underlie that irrationality, and we'll also talk about some phenomena that have to do with the way in which people think about money and time and how they manage both those resources. We'll then talk about methods of behavioral economics. And finally, we'll end up with applications of behavioral economics to real world situations. We have three principal methods that we're going to use to communicate with you. The first is videos. You'll see videos that come in two formats. There are videos like this one, where I'm standing up and lecturing, but there are other videos where I'm actually going to work with a slide deck and go through more intricate examples and more complex information by following along with a PowerPoint slide. The second set of materials we'll use are text materials that you'll see on HTML. We'll have two kinds of materials there. There'll be abridged versions of articles, as well as simple bullet point summaries of some of the lectures that you've heard before. And at the end of each subunit, you'll see small formative quizzes. These are not quizzes that are meant to test you. They're simply meant to make sure that you've grasped the basic ideas that we've just covered in the most recent module. And finally, at the end of each week, we'll have a debate. What you'll see at the end of each week is a video that contains the opinions of four or five academics, policymakers, or business people on a particular debate topic. Once you've heard the video, you'll see a link directing you to a polling station where you can express your opinion in terms of which side of the debate you would like to support. And secondly, to make your own comments on a discussion board. Use the debate arena wisely. It is perhaps the most interesting element of this course, because in that arena, you will hear from a number of my colleagues, both from the University of Toronto and from outside, people that I worked with and people that are generally working in the area of choice architecture and behavioral economics, and you'll get to hear their opinions on some of these leading issues. You'll also get a chance to interact with your fellow students in this edX course. Before I end this segment, I want to give you a brief introduction of my own background and my history. And perhaps the best way of doing that is to show you these four maps that tell you where I come from. I grew up in India. I lived in India for a number of years. I did my undergrad in engineering, followed by a degree in management. After that, I worked in sales and advertising for a brief period of time before moving to the United States, where I got a degree in behavioral sciences at the University of Chicago. I taught in the US for a few years, before moving to Hong Kong, where I taught at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology till 2003, after which I have been in Canada for the past 10 years, teaching at the University of Toronto. 
over the past 20 years, I have spent in academia, I have worked in four different countries, I have taught at multiple levels, but at the end of the day, my research interests are captured by the following simple question. Why do people do things that we think they shouldn't do, and in fact that they think they should do, but yet they do do? And B, what can I do to help them make what they think is the right choice for them? And that's what I want you to take away from this course.